Namaste everyone! So today we are starting a new series of videos in which we are going to talk about Muhurta Yogas. And Muhurta in Vedic astrology is the science of studying the present moment. So in Muhurta we are analyzing what is the weekday, what is the titi, the lunar day, what is the nakshatra, what is the karana. And sometimes we all go even, you know, to much smaller measures of time, like for example titiamsha, which is one thirtieth of a titi, one thirtieth of a lunar day. And we take and collect all those tiny little factors, we bring them all together and we simply analyze, do they resonate or do they not resonate? Is the resonance good and auspicious? Is it going to produce results which are supportive for our growth? Or is it going to bring results which are not supportive for our growth, which are supportive, for example, for destruction or regeneration of something, recycling of the energy. So, Muhurta is very special and I kind of feel it's very, again, a little bit underestimated topic in Vedic astrology. You know, usually when we are taking a birth chart, like the first thing we do, we check the Lagna, the Moon, all the little placements in our own personal birth chart. But actually, you know, in the past, usually people before they would even start looking at your birth chart, before they look at Rashi chart or Navamsha chart, they would first, you know, collect all those little factors, like when were you born, right? What was the position of the sun, the moon, the relationship, yoga, karana, titi, nakshatra, and how those little factors resonate with each other. And they would firstly check this little resonance and then when you look at the entire birth chart from the perspective of this resonance, you can see many more things, many more details, which usually you wouldn't be able to see. So I have described some of the very important Muhurta Yogas in my e-book, Journey with the Moon. And we are also going to learn some of them on our upcoming course on sacred lunar phases or titis, which I am going to have with Cosmic Insights. But I also decided, you know, to cover at least some of the very, very important Mukurta Yogas here on our YouTube channel. So you could simply, you know, learn how to pay a little bit more attention to those things. Because, you know, really the way it manifests in life and how much more you can read from a chart just from Mukurta Yogas or just from studying the qualities of the present moment is just enormous, you know. So first of the Mukurta Yogas, which we are going to discuss, is called Krakacha Yoga. And Krakacha literally means a soul. And it's connecting with things breaking apart. Things that are splitting. So as you can imagine, this yoga is considered to be not that auspicious. It's whenever you are planning, you know, any auspicious activity, it's better if you plan some other day for that. Because what happens, you know, just from my personal experience, that when you start doing some activities on Krakacha Yoga, most likely, you know, something will break apart on the way and you'll need to start it from the beginning. You'll need to start it all over again. So simply, you know, whenever the Krakacha Yoga occurs, what happens is that the energy of the day is more supportive for cleansing, purification, breaking things apart, not bringing them together. Okay, so it's not for growing, it's more for, you know, recycling energy, death and rebirth. This is why this yoga is connected not that auspicious too. So when this yoga occurs, at all. Uh, this is very specific yoga. So Krakacha Yoga occurs every time when the number of the Titi, or so the lunar day, okay, plus the number of the weekday equals 13. So what do I mean by that? For example, quite recently we had Krakacha Yoga and this was Shashti Titi, so the sixth lunar day, plus it was Saturday, the seventh weekday. Why? Because the first weekday in Vedic Astrology is Sunday. So Sunday is number one, Monday is number two, Tuesday is number three, Wednesday is number four, Thursday is number five, Friday is number six, and Saturday is number seven. So recently, when there was Shashti Titi, the sixth lunar day, right? And it was seventh weekday, Saturday, there was a Krakacha Yoga. So whenever something like that occurs, we say that Krakacha Yoga is there. So it doesn't always need to be Shashti Titi on Saturday. It can be, for example, Saptami Titi and Friday, right? So seventh lunar day and sixth weekday. It can be also, let's say, Dvadashi Titi, so the twelfth lunar day and Sunday. 
It's also a Krakacha Yoga. So whenever Krakacha Yoga occurs, something breaks apart. Something in energy is breaking apart. And we had, you know, quite a empiric experience with that actually because exactly when there was Krakacha Yoga we were in the park in this park when we are making this video now and we were just sitting on the bench you know relaxing a little bit talking about Vedic astrology and so on and in one moment we heard such a huge noise behind us coming from the forest and as we never experienced something like that before you know it was quite shocking you know to hear something so loud and I was not seeing at all what is happening so I was like really wondering like I don't know you know is is some airplane having some you know emergency landing you know because this is how how loud the sound was it was very very loud and what turned out is that actually exactly on the day of Krakacha Yoga a huge tree broke apart here this exact tree that you're actually seeing behind me so you see this tree is really huge really massive and it totally broke apart so that's a really really fascinating thing and again you may ask okay so the day was Krakacha Yoga but why exactly in that precise moment that precise minute and that precise second the tree broke apart because it had the entire day to do so right so let us have a quick look at a chart of that moment when this happened so you can have you know just a little glimpse of certain things which you can read from the chart when you are looking at it from perspective of Mukurta. So first thing that we are always analyzing when we are trying to figure out like what is going to be exact result of certain Mukurta yoga, it's very important for us to analyze the dignity or let's say the relationship between the planets who are ruling over different parts of Panchang, so different parts of measures of time taking part into creating this yoga. So in practice, in if during this exact day it was Shashti Titi, whose Titi Lord is Venus, so it's governed by Venus, and it was Saturday, which is ruled by Saturn. So first thing that we would like to look at the chart when we are analyzing the exact outcome of this Muhurta Yoga is the relationship between the two. And you can see in this chart that the relationship between the Titi Lord, Venus, and the Vara Lord, Saturn, is not that easy one. So Venus is in 6 from Saturn, and Saturn is in 8 from Venus. So the 6 and 8 relationship, you know, obviously created some sort of tension here. So that is always one of the first things which we are analyzing. Second thing which we would also like to analyze, because we are also analyzing here Titi, so the lunar phase, is obviously the position of the Moon. So the Moon is also in a little bit challenging position, is in the same nakshatra along with Saturn, retrograde, they are both in Purvashada nakshatra, so nakshatra of Venus again, and the same relationship is formed between the Moon and the Titi Lord Venus. So is the 6th and 8th house relationship, which is, let's say, a little bit troubling relationship for this moon. So again, this is another indication that some sort of, you know, additional trouble will be there. Another important thing which we would like to analyze is how the moon feels there. So he's with Shani, but he's actually in the chart squeezed between Saturn and Mars. So he's experiencing Papakartari Yoga. So he's additionally afflicted, you know, between two quite problematic planets. So that one more thing that triggered something like that to happen. And there is also something that we are calling Titiamsha in Vedic astrology. It's one thirtieth part of the Titi. So each Titi is approximately one day long, right? And it's the 12 degree span of distance between Sun and the Moon. And we are dividing it furtherly into 30 equal parts. So in Zodiac that would be 24 minutes, right? While in our measures of time, it will, one Titiamsha would last approximately 48 minutes, so like one Muhurta in a way. And also the same deities, the same Devas who are presiding the Muhurtas are also presiding the 30 Titiamshas too. And similarly, like each Muhurta, you know, is associated with one of the Nakshatras. In the same way, each Titiamsha also is associated with one of the 27 nakshatras too. So which 
you know, Titiamsha or which exact part of the Titi was active during the moment when the tree broke apart. That was actually Titiamsha governed by Vishaka Nakshatra. And it's so fascinating because Vishaka Nakshatra is the nakshatra of splitting something, right? Literally, Vishaka means branched one, split one. And if you additionally look at the chart, also Jupiter himself, retrograde, he also dwells in Vishaka Nakshatra. Vishaka Nakshatra is also connected to lightnings. And actually one of the big reasons why this tree fallen down, most probably, is because one day before there was a huge storm exactly here. So probably the tree was hit and, you know, it just needed to, how to say, wait a little time more to fall down, to break apart completely. You can also see that the lagna of that exact present moment is just entering this sign where Jupiter in Vishaka is. So the ascendant is in the very, very first uh, degrees in Chitra Nakshatra. And right across it, so right across this Jupiter, is the Sun. And Sun is in Bharani, the star of death. And we all know that Sun, you know, is not the best thing possible if the Sun is in seventh house from the ascendant. Plus, he's also in the star of death and he's also exalted. So the Sun is quite violent there too. So you see, if you take all in all, you know, so many different factors, and in fact there are way more factors here also to take into consideration. But if you take all these little factors, you can really see, you know, how present moment is shaping the reality around us. How the planets and the different cosmic influences are shaping the reality around us. And this is something, you know, so amazing, because if you really start studying, you know, these little planetary influences, you can learn so much just from that. If you even just go to the forest, to the park, and go there frequently enough, you know, to see the changes happening in the environment, you can learn so much about these tiny little Mukurta Yogas. So this is something that I would definitely recommend to everybody, just be with nature and learn from nature. Because there's so much to learn from that, and nature is unbelievably receptive to all these little planetary influences. And whether we want that or not, we are receptive for them too. Just the only thing with us is that we are not always so aware of that. We are not always realizing what is happening. And here is where Vedic Astrology is actually helping us to realize what exactly is happening. So you might ask, what if somebody has in a birth chart Prakacha Yoga? If person was born on this exact specific day when this yoga occurs? Well, definitely there will be challenges for that person. Things related, you know, to breaking apart will be there. And this person definitely might like to be double careful, you know, when it comes, for example, to driving fast, because this person might be much more prone to accidents. In fact, you can see many Formula One drivers with this exact yoga, with Krakacha Yoga. So that's a very, very specific thing. And sometimes, you know, again, if uh, the planets, you know, and the relationship, the lords, you know, taking part in this yoga, so the Titi Lord and the Vara Lord are in some challenging position, it can become, you know, even very destructive. So, for example, one of the natives with Krakacha Yoga was also Adolf Hitler. So, yes, these yogas can be destructive, but again, you can't judge it, you know, just by looking at the yoga itself. Because it doesn't always mean that you need to have, you know, some sort of destructive tendencies, you know? It doesn't need to mean that. But it simply means, you know, that you need to be careful about things breaking apart in your life, in a way, you know? In, and again, you know, the way how Titi Lord is placed, how the Moon is placed, how the Sun is placed and the Vara Lord is placed, it will actually give you a hint in which exact spheres of life you need to be slightly more careful, right? So, and definitely if you are actually having Krakacha Yoga in your birth chart, like one thing you might really like to take care of is your health. So that's just a little bit from me about Krakacha Yoga. And thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about Mukurta Yogas, you can purchase my ebook Journey with the Moon or join me on the course about sacred lunar phases with cosmic insights. And that will be all from me for today. Thank you so much. Namaste.